Today we really are doing something a little bit different. I've been lucky enough to be invited to the new Norton factory in Sully Hill. As we know, Norton's been purchased by TVS and I've been invited here to have a tour of the facility. There's some other people here, other media people here, but uh, we're going to have a good look around here. And for those which are interested in Norton, I mean, who isn't? You know, they've been through the mill recently in the press and with everything that's been going on. This is a chance to show off the new facility and some of the new models they've got coming out for 2020 or updated models. So if that sounds of interest, sit back, grab yourself a cuppa, chop seat, roll the intro. Start it up, can I? I can't start it up today. Not in there. Not in there. Not in there. <laughs> I've got to ask, I've got to ask. Norton Motorcycles. A British mark. A global brand. A passionate team. We've always had a winning pedigree. Rem Fowler lit the match in 1907, and later came Jeff Duke on the famous Featherbed. We're there when epic battles are won, records are broken, and history is made. Today is no different, but now we've transformed the way we work building the most advanced facility in our 123-year history. Our lab is one of the best of its kind. We've invested in state-of-the-art technology that guarantees laser-sharp accuracy and exceptional quality. With a philosophy that integrates design with engineering, we put creativity and originality at the forefront expertly crafting motorcycles that combine dramatic design, breathtaking sophistication, and unmatched functionality, whilst preserving the characteristics that are distinctively Norton. From strong lines that create sleek silhouettes, to the precision ground parts marked with our name and every unique and visible weld. Because those who work at Norton are passionate about what they do. We have an indomitable spirit. We're committed to our brand vision and we're united by a desire to build truly exceptional motorcycles. Norton is unafraid to challenge the status quo, innovating for the future of mobility while staying true to our British heritage to deliver unique and inspiring riding experiences. Just in the reception area, it's rather posh, it's rather posh. So what we're going to do, we have a little uh, interview with Robert Henshaw, the new CEO of Norton. So he's going to give us a tour of the facilities. We're going to go around and meet the different heads of departments. But I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen here. It's amazing. And look at this. This looks absolutely gorgeous. This is a TVS V4S. So you can see it's called v 4 SV because it's a TVS version so this is the new V4S it looks exactly the same so they've kept the same look of the bike but of course they've remanufactured all of the defects they had because apparently the original um, V4S has about 35 serious defects so um, we'll let you know we're going to going to ask Robert about the V4S and what is the plan for existing V4S owners but I have to say this thing is just exquisite all the frame is new you know the whole bike is is new basically but this is a pre-production model there's no um, customer bikes being built yet so they're still doing testing on this making sure the quality is there um, you know so they're not, these are all pre-production so all the bikes you're going to see around the facility today are all pre-production versions 
<laughs> so, Chris Temple, Head of Quality. Hello, Chris. How are you? How are you? Good, yeah. We'll present the quality department. Welcome to the lab. This is the inspection lab where we process all of our poetry, all the parts. Um, so everything that we purchase comes through here in part form. Uh, we can also do assemblies. So we'll do assemblies for fabrication parts or prototypes that we're building in-house. Um, so we've, we've processed uh, just over 600,000 parts through here so far. Um, and I'll just sort of talk you through some of the equipment and then I'll show how this area links to the finished product as well. The idea behind this is it's, it's designed in such a way that we can put a built frame on this. So you can have a frame with a swing arm, rear frame, front frame as a built entity. So we, we can measure uh, an entire frame assembly, whether that be a, a new product uh, or part of our ongoing manufacturing verification process. Okay, um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, a decent sized bed and uh, enables us to sort of have that level of accuracy. But also we can go down to, to minute parts such as that can be. So you're actually measuring all the parts that are made to the correct specifications? Yeah, that's right. So it's conformance to, to drawing. So there's material composition and, and case or core hardness um, and coating we can look at, but also uh, the dimension accuracy is obviously okay. fundamental. And what would that be, like a, a sample out of the batch of parts would then go through, yeah. Yeah, so we, we're doing additional levels of inspection at the moment whilst the company's in its infancy, course, yeah, but yeah. as we build up towards uh, greater supply control, we, we will level off our level of inspection. Um, so we'll get to a point where we're working on a, a smaller sample size. Yeah. At mm -hmm. the moment, we, we process a significant number of parts because we want to ensure that as we go through this phase, we, we're doing everything else we can to ensure that the parts are the best they possibly can be. Moving on from now, we've got some specialist gear uh, for looking at shafts, so crank and camshafts. Um, this is really unique. It's the kind of equipment that you'd only normally see in a camshaft manufacturing facility. So this is the only one of its kind in Europe at the moment. Um, we'll be using this to ensure that our cams are the best they can be in terms of dimension accuracy. Uh, it's all contactless measurements, so it's, it's a pretty sophisticated piece of equipment. We've got a V4 SV frame here, and Mike is just doing some hips okay. on the same part, which I, I showed you earlier. Um, so there it is in its raw state, and then there's a built entity within the frame assembly. Uh, okay, yeah. So we can scan or we can use contact pickups to ensure dimension accuracy of, of either a child component, as Mike's doing, or the finished product. Um, so it sort of demonstrates how the two tie in together. It will take time to, um, to bring new bikes. And so we are focusing on the, um, on the re-engineering and quality improvement of the old bikes. Yeah. And each part built into new bikes will go through quality and part of inspection here to ensure that everything is, is assembled in the right way. Yeah. So, so the bikes and the, the parts we're seeing today, are these pre-production pre parts? No, we, are, we, 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 we investigate every part um, um, regarding to quality, as regarding to, 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 to um, yeah. di dimensions, yeah, and we also destroy material we see later to investigate if we, uh, the welding is correct, for example, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different approach than before. Sure. That yeah. we really yeah. have high quality from the beginning of production process. Yeah. 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 Just to give you an example, this is a warehouse. Yeah. Um, our parts um, for the existing bikes. Um, we have to inspect, as I mentioned, every part. Um, which goes into a new, new product. Yeah. Chris and team from Quality uh, inspected in the last, yeah, since the journey of New Norton, 300,000 parts. Wow, 300,000. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. I asked him last week in management meeting, Chris, give me a feeling, please, how much percentage is done? Because it's a never ending story, it seems like. Yeah? Yeah. And he mentioned, yeah, he's at 30%. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a huge job, really, to, um, um, yeah, to build from the old warehouse proper product yeah. and to, to change supply chain for new product and yeah. to, to improve the complete system. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I not visible. I, I guess a lot of the people who are producing parts for the frame parts, etc., like that, who, who, for the old Norton, then I guess you may be choosing different providers who are making these parts or, or is it a lot of it at the moment the same? The frame we're doing in-house, you'll see in so a second. All, okay. Okay. Frame is in-house, yeah. yeah, swing arm is in-house, but there are obviously um, we are also established now a proper supply chain yeah. audit process. So we are looking after all the suppliers in a, in a defined way yeah. that we pick the one who's, who are, um, conform with our approach. Yeah. Yeah. And all of that goes in the background to, pro to at the end of the day, to provide best quality products in market, to market. Yeah. Head of operations. Hi, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Sorry, I'm going to have a camera in your face now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's not a problem. So, um, 
I'll take you through the manufacturing process uh, for the fabrication of the frames, the engine build and the uh, production assembly of the vehicles as well. Brilliant. So first thing, first place we'll start, we'll start outside because it's just slightly quieter because it's quite a noisy process. Um, the first thing, or the first part of the process for the manufacturing fabrication of frames is we polish all of the tubular material um, in-house by hand. Um, we do this for two reasons. One, it gives us a, a nice clean material to weld with. We get a much better bonding of materials once we've effectively degreased the material and we've smoothed it all off. But also, once we've got a complete frame assembly, um, it's very difficult to get to get access around the component to get a good finished polish. So we try and do as much as the polishing as we can up front. Um, which means at the end of it, we've only got to really tip it all off and tidy up all of the welds. In here, we're currently fabricating the rear subframe for the V4SV. Um, all of the welding of the V4 frames and the 961 frames are done internally um, by the welders that we've got here. So we've, we've invested a lot into the, the processes to develop the welding, uh, fixtures and also the processing. And we've been working hard with all the operators to get a much better refined process uh, for getting consistency the good quality product at the end of the world. What we do as part of the process is on any of our uh, fabricated frames, we've got complete traceability of who the operator is, who's welded it, on, a, on what date, what material they've used, what, what welding gun they've used, what, what gas they've used and what filler rod they've used. So we've got complete traceability across the frame. And at the end of that, what we do is we now QR code all of our frames. So if there was ever a if there was ever an issue out in the field or we needed to investigate something, every one of our frames has a QR code laser etched onto the frame itself, but that also goes on the swing arm, the rear subframe, the front subframe, etc. So these are all checking fixtures or PDI stations, so this enables us to check all the hole positionings of the frames and check uh, the whole size of the frame. In essence, we drop it over a fixture, drop all the points, and it tells us is the frame within our tolerances or not. Um, and once we've finished with that, it will, get, it will go for our non-destructive testing where we do die pen testing, but we can also do destructive testing as well where we want to have a look at the penetration of the different welds. So you can see on the screen at the moment, we're taking some measurements of the, the penetration between two different welds. In the engine, the hand build, in the corner, we have a, a neat test machine. One of the things with the production area, you'll notice that we've got this U-Track system. So an engine will come out of the engine build room on a sit on a cradle like this, where we'll lift it off the pad and drop it onto the build trolleys. We've got four stations currently in operation, but seven marked out across production. So these yellow uh, rectangles represent the build station. So we'll do different processes at every station. Um, We've only got four in process at the moment because that's what our capacity dictates. But when we need to increase our volumes, we'll increase the amount of build stations. And we do have capacity to go up to 14 build stations wow. maximum. Um, so we've got a lot, lot of leg room to go in this facility. The whole concept behind how we've laid it out also gives us the flexibility to increase production. So it's not if we ever need to drastically improve, we need to rip it out and start yeah, again. Yeah. Everything has been based around progressive growth. One Is this the first time the engines will be run on here or are they bench run at all? No, they, so we prime the bike, um, we've inside the engine room so that's just making sure that there's oil throughout yeah. the engine. Um, but the bike the bike is not fired up until it comes through the rolling so This is the first time it's fired. So normally what we would do is the bike would be started up and heated up out, just outside yeah, on course. these runners. Yeah. But for today, for, for you our benefit. Talking, so, um, so what we've been doing is just starting it up and, and, and bringing it okay. straight in. So okay. yeah, it's the first time the bike started up. This isn't a vigorous test where we go to 200 miles no, an hour. No, no, of course. This is what we do on this bench is, you'll see in a second, um, we'll do a front brake test, a rear brake test, and a brake horsepower test at around about 75 miles per hour. What we're trying to establish there is calculating 
the output at a set speed and sit gear, yeah. just to give us a measure, so it's making and then we sure can calculate it's... everything from there. Of course. Um, it's not about... Well, right, that's the last possible. thing you want to do, isn't it, a brand new engine? Uh, no, exactly. So <laughs> we're, we're just trying to give it a steady start. Yeah. So what you'll see on the screen is the exact replica of what they'll see inside. So we do a front brake test at 25 miles an hour, a rear brake test at 25 miles an hour, and a, a power test at 75 miles an hour in sit gear. machine will then tell him to apply the brakes, he'll test the front brakes, and he'll measure a successful pass, and then he'll do the same for the rear brake as well. It's basically measuring the distance it takes to stop the bike. The bike just comes to a steady stop, and at the end of it, we should tell him he's got a successful pass. It's delivered to here. Every single bike goes through this process, and this is end line inspection. Um, so it's a standardised process, starting with the touch lever and working in a clockwise direction around the bike. Um, and this basically is, is a way of us measuring manufacturing success. So we're looking at uh, any assembly problems, any problems with aesthetics on the bike, so fit and finish, um, and certain functional elements. Um, it's a standardised process, as I said, so every bike's done in the same way, following the same process. Is there any sort of visual differences between this version and the old version? So principally it's obviously the idea is it's the same model yeah. uh, in effect but we, uh, underneath everything has been re-engineered. Yeah, yeah, of course. Check. Yeah. So um, to the untrained eye if you were to put them side by side um, you'd have some fit and finish issues that wouldn't be present on the new model. Of course, um, yeah. But it's all about um, basically re-engineering the product. Mm. And obviously it's got SV instead of SS. Yeah. I presume that's not the Euro 5 exhaust, that's the, uh, yeah. that's the race, race version. That's just so it sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which it does. It does indeed. It yeah. does. So should we have any problems um, identified at any line, then the bike will go to be here to be repaired. Um, so there's a standardised repair process and the bike will be confirmed as okay by the same people who've done by inspection. So it's a continuing loop. It's as you would see in any normal area. Yeah, yeah. It's not, we haven't reinvented the wheel here. Um, the bit that is really special for us though is CQPA. That's the customer quality exception audit. And this is where we pick a bike at random from the sales uh, uh, holding area, so a sold vehicle, that would otherwise go to a customer. So we'll, we'll pick any bike, and it's 7% of production volume, and then this bike would then be uh, audited statically and dynamically. Um, so this is a completely independent inspection, and it's as if the customer was receiving the bike uh, in the dealership. It seems like a really good blend of modern and traditional manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, you get that sort of flavour from it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's high quality. High quality, craftsmanship. Yes. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Very, very impressive. Yeah, sure it is. When is the plan to have some customer bikes through the manufacturing process? Is we that... are in VS and V4SV. We are in the final stage of engine testing. Yeah. We already pre produce chassis, so that's already a customer chassis. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I think um, when we um, have the results from the testing, which I expect um, in latest end of November, beginning of December, we can make a decision. Right, okay, excellent. And I've heard that it's slightly detuned from this to make it more reliable. It was maybe a bit too highly tuned in the past and the engine's slightly less power to, make, to bring the reliability and longevity, no. or is that, is that no, not right? I would say the, the old numbers. The old numbers are still, still... No, the old number is not right. Right, okay. So the old number wasn't an accurate representation? Accurate. Ah, okay. <coughs> no. Okay. And now it's the accurate power figures. Yeah, we want to be um, transparent and honest. Yeah, no, sure. And what, it's about 180 horsepower, 185? Okay. And I think you said about 110 staff you've got at the moment. Is that, is that it for now, or is there still some growth? We have 142. 142, today. yeah. Um, we have... Uh, we at the moment in the planning phase to ramp up because especially for engineering we need uh, more people to deliver the plan for yeah. now yeah? and um, we are even considering renting more space. Ah, okay, really. Excellent. And can people 
order bikes now? You know, are, are these available to order or is that not opened yet? We are collecting inquiries for the V4 SV. Okay, okay. And the actual dealers, is it going to be the existing dealers or is, is the whole dealer network still something which is being... We have, we've uh, cancelled all contract, uh, contracts with the dealers. So we are at the moment um, investigating how to set up customer interface. Um, I, I'm a friend of experience centers. So if customer really plan a day trip to spend uh, hours there to experience the bike in a nice environment similar to here. Yeah. yeah. And then um, to manage from there the direct customer interfacing. Yeah, okay. Mm, interesting. I think I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much indeed. You're very insightful. Well, there we are, all done. Just walking out of the factory now. I have to say, that was mighty impressive. You know, massive emphasis on quality. You know, obviously they don't want to go down the same trap as what happened before. And uh, I'm really impressed. I can't believe it was such a small group of people being you know, shown around the factory by the CEO. I thought it was going to be a big group of media, not just me and another guy being shown around. Really enjoyed it. What a, what a facility. I can't believe the scale of this. You know, TBS have brought so much into this, so much money being invested to make this work. I'm very, very impressed. We did have a chat about V4S owners. Um, what basically they're offering is a £10,000 to swap their bikes for a new one. Now, that's 10 grand. What they're saying is that doesn't cover their costs even. To do, there's so many defects, I think it's 35 serious defects with the original V4S. And that 10,000 doesn't really even cover the changes needed because it is a new frame, a new engine. Um, but that's the deal. And apparently they have, the, they have, to accept that deal, they have to respond by the 19th of November. All those 50 owners have been contacted and uh, they've got that offer, an extra 10,000 to swap their bike for one of the first new production machines. I can imagine, you know, you're never going to please everybody, but legally, because there's a whole other entity, bought, they're not liable to do anything at all. You know, they're just doing that as a goodwill gesture for the people who bought the old machine. So um, think of that as you will. If I'd spent my own 44 grand and I had a bike I couldn't use because it had serious defects, I wouldn't be very happy, but I think, you know, 10 grand and you've got a whole new bike. You've got a bike which is going to be worth something. You've got a bike you can actually ride. So, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal, but it's a very difficult situation. And this is a business, you know. They can't refund everybody all their money for something they're not even really liable for because it's almost like a new startup now. But, uh, but there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm really impressed with the facility. When they've got some press bikes available, they're going to give one to me to have a go on. Amazing, I love the look of that V4S. It is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. So uh, we'll see how that rides. So stick around, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time guys. So Cheers. I can feel it's a little bit warm, isn't she? It's a little bit warm. Yeah, the pegs are a reasonable height, they're not too high, are they? They're moderate. I don't suppose I can start it up, can I? Sorry. I can't start it up, could I? Not in the, not in Nine the here. <laughs> so, well, okay. I've got to ask, I've got I to know, ask. I know, it's tempting, but none of them are